did this in the right direction? This camera here? I have no idea. <laughs> okay. Next talk will be by uh, Daniel Caetano. Uh, he will be working on uh, creating correlated rates of care evolution. So we we'll just wait until the challenge of this. All right. So, oh, okay. So we do know that traits do not evolve in a indefinite end, right? So like trait correlation can can be because of gene gene expression. So if we change one of these genes, we're not we are going to change more than one trait. So this can make traits become correlated. So uh, but this correlation can evolve to time. So you can get traits be more integrated so becoming uh, all together in the same set or they can become less integrated and as they become less integrated you can think that they it this this uh, indefinite can allow allow for specialization for a different function uh, so if you think about the phylogeny here you can have a uh, uh, evolution of a different sets of trait integration followed with different ecologies or different functions here so what I'm going to show to you guys today is a way to study evolution of correlation in traits, and it's going to be an extension of what uh, Riddle and Harmon described it as the evolutionary rate matrix. What, what is this? The covariance matrix that show rate of trait evolution here in the diagonal, okay, and evolutionary covariances. So the, the strength of this correlation, this integration among the traits here in the of diagonal blue. Uh, so until now, what we have is the maximum likelihood estimate of this matrix, and you can use these three packages that most of people know, which is Geiger, Phi 2, and Envy, and Envy more. However, estimating covariance matrix is, is, can be uncertain, especially when the sample size reduces, the sample size here is the number of species in the tree. So it's really nice if we could integrate the uncertainty of these estimates in our conclusion, in our biological conclusion. So that's why I'm here, and I'm going to show to you today a Bayesian estimation of this evolutionary rate matrix using MCMC. So the first problem is that it's very hard to sample covariance matrix. So covariance matrix lives in this weird multivariate space with holes that we cannot traverse, we cannot walk very well, and uh, they all need to be positive, then we might have just have help. So what the first thing that we can do to help us is to separate this covariance matrix in two parts, with just standard deviation, which is a vector, and a correlation matrix, which also allow us to play with nice and flexible world. Okay. Nice and flexible prior. So we can put prior on the rate of evolution of the individual traits, and this could be any distribution of positive values. And we can also put bias in the covariance matrix, which is the correlation among these traits. So here, talking about the covariance matrix, we need to put bias the inverse Richard, which gives covariance matrix, and then we separate them in the, in the correlation and standard deviation, we throw this part away. So to show, a little bit how it works in the sampling. So we have a distribution for the standard deviations. Then we have another independent distribution for the covariance matrix, which will produce a different vector standard deviations, which goes to the trash. We are going to only 
looks to the covariant co correlation matrix and the other extended deviation, and that's why the prior and the sampling can be flexible and you can incorporate what you know about the biology of the system here in the extended deviation and the correlation matrix. And with these two elements, we build the matrix again and go to the assembly again. Okay. So what I'm going to show now is two uh, fast biological examples of how we can do this and, and how it looks like after. So I'm going to start with uh, a reanalysis of the data in three by Revel and Color, uh, 2009, published in Evolution. So here they were interested in uh, a change in feeding habit, in habit of these uh, uh, fishes, the centerpiece fishes that happen in this great plate here. So the idea is that they started to eat in a more specialized way. And you would expect a change in the correlation of these two different measurements of the mouse. So you have the gray data here and the black. So to show the posterior distribution results, I'm going to explain first this graphic. So here we have in the diagonal the rates of trait one and trait two, and then the other diagonal the correlation, the, co the covariation between the two traits. Okay? And here down, we have the ellipses, which is a 95 confidence interval of this p-variant um, distribution. So here we go. So this is the posterior distribution of evolutionary rate matrices. I use a flat track prior here for both the standard deviation and for the correlation matrices. So the uh, red line shows the maximum equilibrium this made, which is cozy, which is congruent, which is kind of nice here. And the point here, which is very interesting, is the behavior of the posterior distribution when you modify the number of species associated to that matrix, right? So the color is associated to the different clades and to the number of species, and you see how wider is the, the uncertainty of the posterior distribution when you have less species. So the point here is that instead of using the maximum equilibrium point estimate, we should draw matrices from this posterior distribution and then take our conclusion for those, uh, from those matrices, incorporating uncertainty in the domain. And the ellipses here show that, just as Revel, uh, Revel color shows, we have a tighter correlation between the gate width and the focal length in this micro um, detector. So another example here using analysis, and the question here is just if there is a change in the structure of the integration between Caribbean loans and mainland loans when you look to some traits which are uh, associated with this difference in ecology that we, we know. So the traits that are used here are just gathered from the literature, um, and we have head length, okay? It's now the vent length and tail length of approximately 100 something species of anomaly. So here is just a mitochondrial tree, and I get sequences from these two uh, publications. And I'm showing in blue the Caribbean nose and gray the mainland nose. So first thing that, yes, I do have lots more of Caribbean nose just because they are more studied, so there's more available data. So here we go. This is a posterior distribution. First thing that you're going to notice is that there's no difference, which is interesting. I'm not, so again, we have the rates of trait evolution in the diagonal. It's now it's now length length, head length, tail length, right? So here down we're looking to the correlation of snout and length, which is a kind of a measurable effect, with head length, head length, and then with tail length. And well, things are correlated with body size. We know that. Okay. And uh, we have the correlation of head length and tail length. And we, we can see that tail length varies more, which, which also corroborates the idea of um, um, the echomorphs, since we know that um, the different echomorphs are vary a lot with the tail length. So you will most likely have a better data than this. <laughs> But this is to show, again, uh, that we have lots of uncertainty in the estimate of, of, of these rates. And when I say lots, I'm talking about here is dot zero eight, this dot seven. 
And uh, this width of the Poisson distribution, again, is going to be large and you to have less number of species. So this is now implemented in this package called rate matrix, which you can get from uh, my GitHub. And this is just an overall how the thing work, it just of course you need to have the traits and uh, the traits and the <coughs> you can again set the prior that you want for the root, the standard deviation, the correlation matrix, which can uh, uh, help a lot the estimation too when the number of species is low. And we produce this this types of graphs. So the next step on this journey here is to test hypotheses of evolutionary path modularity. So since we can get a posterior distribution of correlation matrix here, and I'm talking about simply the standard deviations and the correlations in an indefinite way, we can put constraints in this correlation matrix. We can set some correlations to zero or set them to some positive value and then test different different models that's go they're going to correspond to different modularity uh, 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 hypotheses. And that's everything I have. So thank you very much. changes in the evolutionary correlation that are due to that, or they could be due to, you know, changes in ecology, natural selection on characters. Uh, my question is just a little... This, this is a cool thing to do, though, so, yeah. But I, I was also going to ask, um, you mentioned sort of the advantage of doing this uh, in a Bayesian context is taking into account uncertainty, but you can actually, you can do that with likelihood as well. I mean, you can get like a... a Variance on the parameter estimate using yeah, the Yeah, you can get the confidence interface from the, yeah, the action, but you can have sample matrix from that. So the idea of getting a posterior distribution, which I think is nice, like beside the prior could be informative and help you estimate, is to draw a matrix from the posterior distribution and then actually have a posterior, a posterior or have an uncertainty of, of next analysis you're going to do with those matrices. In this part, I think that helps. But yeah, you can get the confidence interval from the Haitian. So, um, if you actually have uh, large sample data, you can do it that in the maximum likelihood you just, you're just resampling from uh, the transformation of the, of the average information matrix. So, uh, this is implemented in Wombat, for example. So, um, that's something that it's, it's much easier to run uh, easily because you're not, you don't have to uh, approach a distribution. So, what you're saying you can't do, you can do, there's, it, it is doable. Okay. 